when the young man Shiloh said, "Last, this isn't last chance you, it actually is last chance you, son. This is Juco as that it's ever been. College football at the four-year level now is as Juco as it's ever been. Mm. It is mercenary, getting transfers, getting other power five guys, and it's in an 18-month span, which is my target window in Juco to get you in and out. So it is more last chance you than it's fucking ever been. Mm. Think about just like this, not to cut you off, but I got to give you your flowers. Think about it like this. Now, a kid goes to, for example, I've got four guys this morning that are all offered by Washington State, okay? Well, Washington State now is in the is in the Mountain West, essentially. They're in the Pac-12, but it, let's be real. We all know what the conference is. Every one of them, the conversation is, well, if I end up going to Washington State, I could stay there for a year and a half or two years and develop and then go on the transfer portal and go somewhere higher, right? And I'm like, yeah, that's the way it is. That's what this is set up to be. Bam, exactly what Coach just said. College football everywhere is JUCO right now, dog, period. And, like, mm. it look, like I'll use another example of the other side. Trey Zoom just got, you know, he selected captain for AM yesterday. He's going in his fifth year at Texas AM. and Well, he was recruited before the transfer portal era. But. He stayed and developed and played for three different head coaches or two different head coaches now and Jimbo and Mike Elko. He really wanted to play there. That's his home. That's his that's his shit. If you're grad transferring, that's one thing. If you're developing, that's one thing. But the, coach, you're 100 percent correct, bro. Like everybody going in, this is an 18 month turnaround. If you're lucky, if not, you could be there for six months. Like it's just a way for them to cut guys. Let me ask you guys this thing real quick. Based upon everything that we're saying right now, based on the fact that like we're questioning how do you build culture in an era and at a time when players are coming in and out, what will determine the the teams that who, who get it right, the teams that go undefeated and they win the natty next year? What in your guys' eyes or your opinion will will determine the success? Like how how can teams win and be great in this era? I, here's the let me just. Talk, let me talk. Let me let me piggyback off of what Matt and I just Wait. said about the JUCO. Wait. I just talked to some former NFL guys who have JUCO connections that were JUCO guys. Yeah. Um. And I'm just gonna throw this out there, dog. There's a real fundamental reason, other than being blackballed by Netflix and the way they depicted me. There's a real reason why they will not hire me in this era. You would kill it. And that's because I am the program builder for the two-year institutional level. And this is my wheelhouse. There would be people in serious fucking trouble if I got a job. I don't give a fuck if it's at Akron, Ball State, or goddamn Power 5 level. You are going to have a real problem. Because it takes a real guy that understands quick turnaround culture program building that is going to win in this era. And you are seeing why Nick Saban struggled in this recent last few years. It's not a two year fix anymore. He still has four year mentality and it is not that way anymore. Even we saw Kirby last year, they've lost more people than they've ever lost. And, and Clemson never even used to go in the portal. And now they've lost people and now have to dive into the portal because you now have to keep up with the Joneses. So having said that, <clears throat> you are crippling the two-year institutions, which are JUCOs, meaning they're not getting portal kids no more. I mean, they used to be the portal. Now transfer kids are sitting in the portal. So JUCOs have become very, very watered down talent wise juco's are not the same as it was when i was there just five six years ago so if you talk about you're crippling high school because you're not recruiting them we already talk about that all the time you're not recruiting high schools as we once did so cats are leaving high school and sitting out an actual year instead of going juco and then you got the portal sitting there with seven thousand kids instead of going juco but yet it's a JUCO model being ran at the Power 5 school level. How does it make sense? You're going to get rid of JUCO, and it's going to be over. I'm just telling you right now, JUCO folds, high school's next, and Division 1 will be doing what we say. What do we? What, what happens when a cow eats a cow meat? I, what? What's the word? What's the word when they eat each other? Like cannibalizing? 
That's what you're about to have. You're about to see cannibalization in Power Five college football because that well, is what's going to happen. What do you when when you have no feeder? Who do you feed on? Yourself. Yourself. Um, look. Also, JUCO, you get the opportunity to play, dog. The transfer portal, there's no reps. And you learn some tough skin and... Yeah, there's no weight room. There's no fucking overcoming. There's going and sitting in your house and hopefully you got some coach down the street that can help you. And, you know, that's probably not happening. I know this because this is what I do for a living. I got guys that are leaving for their opportunity in May and this morning at 5 a.m., you know, just big tank, like, hey, thank God I had you down the street for the last seven months. So I don't know what I would have done. Like, guys sit in the transfer portal and they sit in their basement and, like, complain and cry and whine about their lack of opportunity. Well, you think that, like, not doing anything is going to help you get more opportunity? Mm. Do you think not posting and not being on, you know, not at least playing ball somewhere and getting reps, regardless of where it's at, you think that's not going to help you? Like, Cam Newton had to go to Blend Community College and fucking Juco to clear, clean his name up and go play. How many fucking ballers has coach put out into the NFL? I mean, it just left and right, every time you turn on the TV, there's another guy that had to overcome something and they got to play again and like kind of revamp their image and then bam, it blew up. So again, this whole thing of like eliminating the adversity for young men at this time in their life before they, especially in football is ridiculous. In my opinion, you got, you need to learn how to deal with the adversity that's hitting you in the face left and right, because I'm telling you, bro, all this is doing is breeding cowards for the real world. It's breeding a bunch of finger pointing cowards that are going to do nothing, but get into the real world and wonder why nobody gives a shit. There ain't no transfer portal in the fucking real world, homie. You got to deal with your problems. Like, and coaches, same thing back to you. There's no transfer portal in the real world. Like, at some point, you're going to have to figure out a way to keep the kids around. And, like, like, do the coaches have to figure out a way to, like, completely conform to just being an Army recruiter? Like, they have to sit there and tickle your balls all day just to get you to come play football. And then anything that happens, you get – they don't get enough reps. They, you know, they – Whatever, you recruit some other kid and bring in some other guy that they see on social media and they get offended. Like, you're not the only one on the team. We got to have more than one defensive end. Like, it, this whole shit is becoming so just, it's so unfootball to me. Like, this is not what football is, dog. This game is about overcoming adversity, earning your opportunity. If you're a bad motherfucker, you got to keep you, that. that is a target that people chase. It's not like, oh, he's good, fuck him. Like it, it, this, this whole, this whole like quitting rather than than committing the running instead of fighting, you know, standing up for what you believe in and like actually putting the work in to earn it rather than just expecting people to give you money and opportunity because you some fucking, you know, some dork in their basement rated you high on a on a star system in high school. Come on, dog. I mean, at some point that you got to make it make sense, and it sure as hell isn't. I'll tell you that it makes no sense right now. And to your point, real quick, JB, just to add to that, I I think one of the problems too that you know we've talked about it on the show before is that I think it's twofold. Is one like Matt alluded to, players are are scared to fight and earn and earn it. But in number two, though, I don't know how many players are loving the game right now because it's like you're you rather be in the transfer portal. Than just out on a on a practice field. Even if you're not starting, like I love football, is what I'm saying. Like, so even when I wasn't the starter, in my freshman year at Ball State, like I I didn't redshirt, I rotated, but it was games where I played like four plays. That's it. And that just that was my role at that time. But at the end of the day, I love the game itself. So I, I love the work. I love the going out on the field and and struggling with something and then figuring it out and then actually getting good at it. Like the whole I love football. I think that kids are losing the the true foundation foundational love of the game, and they're falling in love with all the perks that come with it: the money, the cloud, the social media, the highlight tapes, etc. You love the game. You you love the game because nobody allowed you to transfer. The problem is we've allowed and opened this Pandora's box, and and once you give a kid an inch, he's going to take a foot. That's a kid's nature. He doesn't know what he doesn't know. 
So, like, I just th- – we've created this. It's not the kid's fault whatsoever. I don't blame the kids at all. What I do blame, though, is when the kids do something that the adult corrects it. And that is why I have an issue with the Shador and the Shilohs. Because to me, I don't give a fuck what you say about me. I, I, I'm speaking as a coach in, in defense and the defense of prime, whether he knows it or not. I'm not from the school where kids get to speak over grown folks. I'm not from the school where kids get to say what they want in my program because you make my program look bad. And in this instance, you're making your own dad look fucking bad, having to defend more and more and more and more. He already is Deion Sanders. Like, it's already on. He already has a fucking bullseye. So now you're just, to me, now listen, if that's their get down, so be it, dog. You're just going to have to go win. Um, I, I, before I move on, Matt, I want to shout out Monica Evers in the chat. She has a She's a mother of a Power 5 player. And nice. so I spoke to her in depth about some things um, the other day, and, and she has interesting takes on the portal. So she's very in, in tune to this. She, she's not a portal fan, but her son actually just got in one. And she's like, she has very interesting perspectives as to why it is almost a must now because of the dollars being spent and the fact that if you don't make money, you won't even play. That means if, if they're going to pay you a money, a bag, that you have to get on the field. And if not, it is no ROI. There's no return on investment of the collective that's paying you. Yeah. 